our first ever physics feature in Effect House, Dynamic Chain, allows you to add realistic chain physics to 3D objects in your scene. These can be both 3D assets and 2D assets, and really, the sky is the limit. So you can do something simple, like a hat, or facial hair, or hair, or something even more complex, like a humanoid ragdoll. So we have a, a variety of features within our dynamic chain feature. We have a various presets that you can enable on dynamic that allow you to easily switch between various types of joints. You can edit dampening, elasticity, stiffness, and inertia parameters, and you can edit those with pin to graph and make some interesting interactions. You can add force. So now you can simulate gravity in effect house. You can also do local and world force, and you can also change the relative rotation of the dynamic chain with another asset in 3D scene. You can also add multiple dynamic chains to a single chain of objects to have multiple different parameters for different chains on a single chain. So if you want to combine dynamic chain with baked animations, we recommend this is possible, very possible. You can see it happen in the left hand side here, but we recommend that you skin the model to the bone, the scene object, instead of parenting the model to the bone for optimal results. Really, the possibilities are endless and I, I can't wait to show you. So let's get right into it. So here I've set up a very basic effect house with just a few spheres that are parented to each other. So if I move this around, you can see they all move, right? I'm gonna go to add component, 3D physics. This is our new category with only one item. I'm gonna add dynamic chain. I can wiggle this thing and it will simulate chain physics in real time in your scene or in, in your preview window rather. You can change these presets. So if you want something that's more springy, you can change it to the springy preset and now you see it, it, it has different physics interactions. My favorite thing is this gravity feature. I think it's very exciting that now you can simulate gravity in real time in Effect House. So that's the most basic implementation, but like I said, sky's the limit. We have uh, on our learning resources available to you a template for dynamic chain which includes earrings as well as hair. So these earrings are more simple objects. They're just basic 3D assets, but they are they can be tracked to the person's head. I'm gonna try turning on my face cam here. So it can simulate in real time, just like this. Now, a very, a very common implementation of dynamic chain is for hair. I have a basic hair asset here that I'm going to go ahead and drag into my scene and I'll try positioning it properly. So this is how hair would look like now in effect house, but that's, doesn't, that's not what hair looks like in real life. So I'm going to go to the root node of the hair here. I'm going to add component 3d physics, dynamic chain. And now it's very, very wiggly, far too wiggly. But what we know about hair is that around the where the hair meets your scalp, it should be more rigid. So I'll add the rigid preset to that. So now it's simulating a little better. But as I mentioned before, you can add multiple dynamic chains to a single chain. So I'm going to go to a bone that's rigged to this hair just above this. I'm going to add another component on the dynamic chain. And now you can see that the hair up here is a little more realistic, waving in the wind. And the hair down here is stable to my head. If I played around with this a little bit more, you might see something that looks like this. Pretty good. So that's the basic demos of Dynamic Chain. We have our learning resources available for you on our website. And we also have included some other inspiration for you made by Effect House creators and template here. So. I can't wait to see what you make, and I'm very excited that you can now play around with physics in Effect House. Thank you. So firstly, we have what are called interactions in 210. So we've looked at common use cases for groups of nodes, and we've kind of packaged those all into subgraphs for you all. So to quickly give you a demo, if you add, say, a 3D sphere, now, over here in the inspector panel, you'll see under add component, we have add interaction. And if you click that, you'll see a list of interactions. And just to show you an example, if we click tap screen to toggle visibility, that's going to automatically make 
it's going to pull both the object into the, the visual scripting panel, and it's also going to bring this subgraph into the panel. And as you can see now, if I click my screen, you can't see me clicking probably, but when I click it, it's going to make the sphere appear and disappear. I can also choose start hidden if I want it to start hidden, and then when I tap, it will come. So what's cool about these is you can click into them, and each interaction is going to be made of two more subgraphs, the event trigger and the event response. You can also copy with Command C or Control C and Command V and pull these out of these interactions if you want to combine them in ways we haven't already combined them for you. And once you click in to those also, you will see that you can actually see the nodes, the existing nodes that are used to make up these subgraphs. So interactions are cool in that they're both a really quick way for you all to add some features or some, some interactions to your objects, but they're also a bit of a learning tool. So if you want to see how our engineers actually combine nodes to make things happen, you can click into them to get a little peek behind the scenes. I'll delete this one and I'll quickly make one more. So again, add interaction. What's also cool is you're only going to see interactions that apply to that object. So if you have a sphere selected, you'll see interactions that can work for a 3D object. And if you have a image selected, for example, you will see some interactions that apply only to images. Let me delete that. Cool. So I'll show you one more. Let's do tap screen to cycle materials. Quickly, I will add two materials. Let's make this one blue. And let's make this one red. And you'll see that I can apply these here to the interaction. And now if I tap the screen, it's going to switch between those two materials. So again, there's a bunch of nodes in here that you can look into, but these are just very quick use cases we have done to make your lives a little easier. Cool. Next thing I want to show you all is some of our new nodes. We have, I believe, 15 new nodes for 210 that are in this little subgraph. I'd get these out of here. Cool. I'm not going to go over them all, but quickly we'll do a run through them. So we've got material info, set material, texture sequence info. We have get component by type. So you can now pull components. We have get children scene objects. So you can pull a parent object's children and turn them into an array. We've got screen transform info, which is going to give you the position, size, pivot, all that jazz. We have set screen transform. And again, I encourage you all to play around with these when you get them or if you already have it. We have image info, set image, render info, set renderer. We've got animation sequence info, set animation sequence, coexec, and we have index generator. Again, I can't get into all of these, but there's a lot of cool new things. We're, we're using materials more, we're using textures more. You're able to pull components. You're able to work with children, child objects. Quickly, I'll just kind of give you a little look at, let's look at coexec for a sec. So what this one's gonna do now is you can actually make sure two triggers have to happen at the same time in order to trigger the next node. So if I want you know, a hand symbol to happen at the same time as a facial gesture, I can plug them both into coexec and then it will only output the trigger if two triggers are actually happening at the same time. You can also obviously add more. So four triggers have to happen at the same time in order to trigger something. And then the threshold is going to be kind of the amount of frames or seconds you want, like of a grace period to ensure that all those triggers are happening at, at, within that time frame. And then index generator is super helpful, especially for our randomizer folks. So again, you can set a from and a to, and it's going to output a number um, or a sequence of numbers. And you can either loop those numbers. You can do random, which is going to give you a completely random number within that range, and they can repeat. Or you can do shuffle, which will give you a range of numbers that don't repeat in a random order. So I encourage everyone to play around with these. We've got a new 2D system in 210. So if you're coming from 2.0.0, you know our old image. That is now going to be in our 2D section, and it's going to be called screen image. 
So it's a little different now. It uses a screen transform component and an image component. So the screen transform component is going to control the size of this bounding box. So again, you can control that here. And then the image component, you're going to be able to play with how it fits that bounding box. So if I do stretch, for example, now it's going to look more like the old image you know and love. But with a square image, if I do fit, for example, it's going to fit into this bounding box I've set up here. And again, you can pivot and rotate and all that jazz. And then we also have a new 3D image, which is going to be found under 3D, and it's just called image. And it's pretty self-explanatory, but this is an image that's going to now exist in 3D space. So it can be rotated or move forward or backwards. And though you could, of course, have applied a material and a texture to a plane before, that's going to make this, this is going to make that a lot easier and a lot quicker to make images in 3D space. You're also going to be able to now put images onto world AR effects. So you can have 3D images in your in your 3D space a lot easier. And then this image refactor has also changed segmentation and face sticker because those both use image as well. So I encourage you all to check those out as well. If you are opening an older file into 210 and you have the old image, it will import those images into 210. You just won't be able to add those exact same image objects into 10. If you have projects on the go in 200 using images, you can finish those up and then start something new in 210 if you want. And then with this, of course, our screen tap node or our image tap node, excuse me, is now going to be a screen image tap node and it's going to work with the screen image. So you're going to pull your image component here and you are going to plug it into your screen image tab. But again, if you have an old image tab node from 200 coming in, that's going to be deprecated and it will still work with your older images. But if you want to use new stuff, I encourage you to use the screen image tab node and use the screen image going forward. We have new scene view and graph panel interactions. So you can't see this very well because it's how I am actually clicking on my computer. But now if I do a two finger click and drag, you'll see I'm panning around the visual scripting panel. And if I do a two finger here, let me delete this image so you can see me a little better. So if I'm doing a two, flick, two finger click and drag, I am moving around the panel. And if I'm doing a two finger slide, I am zooming in and out now. And with that comes some changes also for mice. And the good news is we now support the magic mouse. So for any of you who have a magic mouse and have been facing some issues, maybe your magic mouse should now work with version 2.1.0. We have updated our eye color object. So for those of you who are familiar with effect house, you know that our eye color used to be two objects. It was the eye color and then it had a mask. We've now combined those into one object. So you'll see here in the eye color component, you can now mask it here with left eye, right eye, or both eyes. And with this, we've also added this eye color scene panel. So you can easily kind of see how your eye color is going to look on various different eye colors and different eye shapes. So this is great. And again, it will still show up also in the preview panel. So you'll see right now my left eye is red, but this is just another way for you to test it out on different users. Last but not least, and this one's again, harder to show, but we have a new world scale. So in the past, if you were making effects using the AR camera, you would have had to put an object inside of a container that was scaled to 0.05 just to make that object work in our, our scale. But now we have changed our AR scale units from meters to centimeters. So you no longer have to use that container when you're making world AR effects using the AR camera, things should be a good and manageable size in your preview panel as well as in your scene. But if you are like importing new objects into 2.1.0 objects you were using in 2.0.0, you will notice they're existing at a different scale.